Good morning. I will now call the August meeting to order for the Tennessee Fish and Wildlife Commission. My name is Angie Box. I'm the chairman of the commission. If you all will please stand. Invocation in the prayer. Invocation in the Pledge of Allegiance. Commissioner Woods. Thank you, Commissioner Woods. I'd like to welcome all our guests and visitors we have here today. Scott List, Krista Rosenberg from Knoxville, Kurt Rosenberg from Knoxville, Jen Robinson, all from Knoxville, Jonathan Carroll, Don Holmes, Clarence and Laura Dyes, thank you for the salsa. There they are. Scott Rees with UT Extension and Perry Sevier County Mayor, nice to have you here. Assistant, where is he at? Great, thank you for being here. All right, wonderful. Let's see. Um, today we're gonna recognize our friend, previous chairman, Jim Ripley. We'll hear from the elk, elk quota permits, the conservation raffle. We'll also hear from boating and law enforcement committees, budget committees, and fisheries. First, Ms. Danette, will you call the roll? Jimmy Granberry, Tommy Woods, here. Monty Ballou, Stan Butts, here. Wally Childress, here. Bill Cox, here. Chris Devaney, here. Chip Saltzman, Steve Jones, here. Brian McLaren, here. Kent Woods, here. Hank Wright, here. Angie Box. Madam Chairman, we have a quorum. Thank you, Ms. Danette. You all received a copy of the minutes were distributed before the meeting. Do I hear a motion of approval? So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Motions are approved. Uh, do you have, I'd like to say a few announcements. I want to thank you all for the food who prepared. It was wonderful. And thank you all for the officers and the staff on the bear, the nuisance bear issue. That was uh, quite an experience, and we appreciate all you do. That's that's tough, so we appreciate what's, uh, what y'all are doing. Uh, do we have any announcements for the director? Thank you, sir. Madam Chairman, I do have one. At this time, I would like to recognize a very special lady, and she's going to swap me for this, but Miss Cheryl Holtum. <laughs> Miss Cheryl has has it was a retired general counsel with the agency and she has helped us through a transitional period and we pulled her out of retirement or we didn't pull her out. She volunteered to come out and help <laughs> us. Miss Cheryl, I want to thank you on behalf of the agency for really helping us through this time. Thank you so much. If you will, let's give Miss Cheryl a hand. Thank you. Okay, now we will move on to our presentation for Mr. Jim Ripley. Do we know if he is on Zoom? I'm here, Madam Chairman. Hi, Jim Ripley. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. How's Florida? Beautiful. You're not, a Disney, you're not a Disney World today? What's that? You're not at Disney World today? No, we're, we're, uh, we're not going to be at Disney World, but uh, we're going to be on the beach for sure. We're in Sanibel. Oh, that's beautiful. Well, I, we would like to present you with a special award. And I've asked before this a few comments on Jim Ripley. And I just wanted to share those with you. Steady, calm leadership of the commission, articulate defender of the agency, willingness to, willingness to listen to a different opinion, 
funny and intelligent. And can tell the difference between a Jake and a gobbler. <laughs> I cannot tell a difference. <laughs> there you go. But we appreciate everything you've done and you were an honor to work with. And uh, we just appreciate your leadership with the commission. Thank you so much, Angie. It's uh, been an absolute privilege to serve with the commission. As you all know, I was elected judge of the Chancery Court and I'm unable to hold uh, uh, very hard thing for me to do. Um, it's a great privilege to serve uh, such a great state agency. And I want to thank everyone there for being so supportive of me uh, over the years. Uh, you all are doing great work, and I know you'll continue under the strong leadership that Ann and Andrew Mack on by. So thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Once you're a member of the TWRA family, you're always a member, and I'm very proud to be a member. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have comments? George? Hello, Rimbo. <laughs> Hello, Rimbo. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Jim Ripley. You have a great time at the beach, and thank you for signing in today. We'll present this award to you in person once you come back. All right. Thank you so much, Angie. Thank Take you care so now. much. Have a good trip. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Okay. At this time, I'd like to call up Dr. Brad Miller with the Elk Program, the Elk Program Coordinator to announce the Elk Quota Permit winners. Oh, sorry. Uh, good morning, everyone. As usual, there was a lot of interest in uh, applications for uh, the elk permit. We had about 11,000 folks apply for the archery and the firearm permits and almost 400 youth applicants for the youth tag. So we get to make I get to make about uh, 14 people happy. And as the commission pointed out a couple of years ago, you know, roughly 11,000 disappoint. <laughs> but, uh, but without further ado, let's uh, let's announce the winners. So I'm going to start with archery winners. First, we have Cody Allen Deese of Clarksville, Preston Chance Rouse of Knoxville, John Hopson of Nashville, Brian Austin Cowan of Portland, Gary Wayne Ward of Jacksboro, a local guy, Lee of Spring Hill. So those are our archery permit holders. Uh, oh, sorry, one more. And uh, Richard Holman Britt of Signal Mountain. So for the uh, firearm muzzleloader, Paul Chambers of Chattanooga, Gregory Cooper of Savannah, uh, Maya Stewart of Randy Lee Dodd of Humboldt, Heard Mount Carmel, and David Sealville, Florida. So those are our firearm uh, permit holders. And then last, our young sportsman is Garrett A. Ballard. Um, I will be reaching out to each of you today. All right, congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Miller. Congratulations to all the successful quota hunt permit winners. Next, we'll be announcing the Conservation Raffle winners. It's an incredible program that was put on by our friends at Tennessee Wildlife Resources Foundation. One example of how we have those dogs to put to work is, for instance, yesterday we had the grand opening ribbon cutting at the Elk Tower. We uh, do dedicated to Terry and Jane Lewis. Uh, we have a video to show you, so let's take a look. Here it is. Today, we are naming this tower in Jane Lewis Elk Viewing Tower. Well, it's a wonderful day. Um, it's been a long journey. Uh, we certainly want to thank all the volunteers that helped. 
this viewing area for all the people to come and see. One of our efforts was to create a high probability of viewing opportunities, and I think you have it right here. They want to share these elk, these, these creatures with the world. And that's why this tower is here because of that, des that desire to help others experience what they love and to make it easy for them to do that. Today, 48% of the land of Campbell County is public land, one of the highest percentages in the Eastern United States. Cora worked with TWRA, the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation led the process and the public comment for the reintroduction of elk on the wildlife management area in 1999. Also led the subsequent opening of the first hunt for elk and still manages the food plots with the help of Terry and Jane to enhance these animals in this habitat. Cora also put the first viewing tower up. And then we're lucky today that we're completing the first phase of the new tower complex. One of the few places that has a live cam that you can actually view elk um, in the was seen to Rome in Tennessee since the 1860s. Um, there's also a Tennessee Knoxville study and that estimates there's about 16,000 visitors that come here annually to come and view the elk at the tower. So that's a big driver for the local economy and the community as well. So it's really a win-win nothing conservation and for the community. From Campbell County, Tennessee, Office of County Mayor, a proclamation of bugling season 2022. Whereas citizens in our fair county recognize the value of conservation, and whereas the North Cumberland elk herd is a conservation victory, and whereas Campbell County led all 95 Tennessee counties in tourism sales growth in 2020 during the COVID-19 pandemic with 4.1 million in sales growth over the previous year. Whereas the Hatfield Knob Tower was one big reason for that growth, and knowing that our community loves these out resources, IEL Morton, Mayor of Campbell County, Tennessee, upon this occasion of the new tower dedicated, proclaimed the August and September 2022 as bugling city of Campbell County, Tennessee. We welcome uh, everybody to wildlife as we do. That was great. Thank you. <clears throat> and if y'all haven't been there to visit, please do so. It's, it's worth the trip. And it was, I think commission went back in 2018 and it's a big difference. It's beautiful. They've done a great job. We want to thank our partners who helped constructed that. So it was a great day. Uh, very exciting. We have Mr. Joey, Joey Woodard with the foundation to announce our conservation raffle winners. Thank you, Madam Chairman, uh, members of the commission. I appreciate the opportunity to present today, and I'm excited to uh, talk about our conservation raffle. Um, we've concluded that raffle. The drawing has been held, and I want to announce the results today. But before I do that, I want to give you just a little bit of background for those that may not be familiar with the raffle, uh, maybe some of the folks that are viewing from home. Um, the foundation is a 501c3 nonprofit, and, um, you know, a lot of folks say, is this, is this TWA's raffle? How does TWA have a raffle? Well, TWA is a state agency. It can't have a raffle, uh, but we are a nonprofit partner of TWA and the Secretary of State allows us to have one raffle a year. And we choose with the agency to use our one nonprofit raffle uh, for this for this uh, purpose uh, and to maximize the opportunity to raise revenue for conservation projects. Uh, like in years past, we have 10 prize packages this year. Um, the structure was very similar. One ticket for twenty dollars, three tickets for fifty dollars or 10 tickets for a hundred dollars. Uh, believe it or not, doesn't seem like it, but this is our fifth year uh, doing this. Um, doesn't seem like five years has passed, but somehow it has. And what's incredible about this is that uh, for the past five years, we've seen incredible growth uh, out, of, out of the rebel, uh, the success of this event. And um, so that's what I wanna share with you just a little bit today. Looking at those five years, you can see over time how this thing has kind of started from humble beginnings and grown. And last year, the results were incredible. Over $1.8 million was raised. And I'm proud to say that we beat that this year by just a little bit. Uh, $1,899,300 was raised for conservation uh, through this effort this year. Uh, and that is just about $19,000 better than our effort last year. Uh, so proud to uh, report that. But the bigger story uh, behind all of this is not just the direct funds that were raised uh, through ticket sales, 
Um, as you can see in this graphic, uh, that's over $5.8 million. And that's a feat in it. But more importantly, when TWA takes those dollars and use those as non-federal match, then we have effectively uh, got, gained access to over $23 million uh, to put on the ground for conservation here in Tennessee. And that is impactful. Uh, so we're proud to be a part of this. And, um, you know, it's important to really stand out in this, but there's a whole lot of work into making this raffle possible. And I do want to take just a moment to recognize the people that work so hard uh, to make this raffle successful. Um, most people in this room probably crew, but uh, Johnny Allred is out there beating the bushes. I'm not going to say it's a year-round thing, but almost year-round now. Uh, we're working on raffle stuff, and, and Johnny's beating the bushes, working with our partners, uh, trying to solidify donations and these prize packages. Um, Dan's working tirelessly on our website to make sure that everything's working on the backside so that when people click the button, their ticket purchase actually goes through, and then we've got all the records that we need. Uh, Richard Logsdon working on graphics make sure that they're flawless so that we're communicating the message we want to communicate uh, through all this. And then Jennifer and, and her team working on the marketing. Jennifer really been the, the marketer on all of this. And it takes all of us coming together uh, in order to pull this off. And uh, a lot of effort went into this year. I can tell you, we worked harder this year than we did last year, and we're going to continue to do so. Uh, I think we're just going to have to continue to innovate. Uh, but we, we welcome the opportunity and the challenge, and uh, we'll see where that takes us. But I, but I do think these results speak for themselves. We've just been really fortunate uh, to have such, such a successful raffle. Uh, I don't know if it's the biggest in the country, but it's certainly one of the biggest uh, in the country. And all of that work that I just talked about that we do internally, uh, that's just the tip of the iceberg. The, there's others that we really need to thank for the success of this raffle as well, because not only are we successful and, and effective at raising money, but we do it really efficiently. The way we do that is partnering uh, with our industry partners you know, we have a whole lot of folks uh, in the industry that donate prizes to make this raffle work. And we would not have the success with this event if, if it weren't for those partners. Don't want to take too much time in packages this year. Um, we have a $50,000 voucher that someone uh, is going to be awarded today. That's good towards the purchase of any new Ford vehicle, truck, EV doesn't matter, $50,000. Um, that was donated from Mid-South Ford dealers. Um, they've been a really strong um, partner of this raffle effort. And it really changed the face of our raffle. Once we were able to uh, secure this package, it really changed the stars for, for our raffle. And we really appreciate them. As always, Bass Pro, uh, they're just a great partner. We're, uh, anytime we're doing anything, they are supportive of us. And this year, they have donated the Tracker Pro Team 175 uh, Bass Boat. This boat is fishing ready. Basically, you register this boat, it's ready to hit the water. It comes with motor, trolling motor, everything you need. Uh, it is it is water ready. So also, uh, and this is where this partnership comes in, the agency has, has awarded one, not the winner of this package, not only gets to hunt zone one, uh, but they also get this Weatherby rifle um, and uh, um, Crimson Tray scope, Dana Roots and Axle Hearing Protection. We have Best of the West and a long range precision shooting package. For those of you that are not familiar with Best of the West, look into it. Uh, it's an amazing system that they've got. You basically dial it and forget it and send it down range because those, those things are incredibly accurate. Academy Sports, uh, another great partner, not only for the raffle, but also for the free fishing day events that are held across the state. Uh, Academy has donated a $5,000 gift be awarded that and that's good online or in store uh, we have a president's island deer hunt uh, and all of the accoutrements that go with that uh, we've got boots crossbow uh, uh, again this year henry uh, has has uh, been kind enough to donate us a custom rifle you can't go to the store and buy this rifle this is a custom rifle built only for this raffle um, it's the uh, it's the new original henry in 44 4440. It's got the Tennessee TriStar logo logo on it, and the serial number uh, is specific. It's a specific run just for this raffle. So, in addition, we kind of sweeten this package this year. Um, this year, we've added four uh, lifetime licenses to the Heritage package. So, somebody uh, somebody's going to be the winner of that today as well. Main package: the great folks at Final Flight Outfitters, uh, Retay Shotgun, Danner Kennels, and uh, $500 gift card from Real Tree Clothing.
So it's a, a wonderful package as well. Bass Pro Shops, as if they hadn't done enough, they also donated this uh, uh, Tracker Off-Road 450 AV. So some lucky winner is going to be uh, taking possession of that real soon. And our final uh, package of the 10 is a Governor's Warning we hold each year in uh, Franklin. We have about 500 people in attendance, but uh, so it's a it's a turkey hunt, but it's also a banquet. But the coolest thing about this package is whoever wins this is going to get to hunt with Preston Pittman, and that in and of itself uh, is is the hunt of a lifetime uh, to hunt with the King of Spring, and uh, Preston always puts on a good show. So somebody's going to have a good time uh, winning that TriStar uh, a TriStar 410 shotgun comes with that as well, and pretty much everything you'll need to to turkey hunt. So those are the ten packages. But well, we went ahead and did uh, something similar to what we did last year. We're going to draw, we have drawn 100 additional names, um, and each of those people will be awarded uh, a white smooth bone handled trapper knife uh, with the TWF logo on it. Now, I'm not going to go through all 100 names today, but those names will be posted on our website. So even if you're uh, watching, if your name's not called in the top 10 packages, uh, take, a, take a visit to the website, see if your name's there, because you might have won one of these great pocket knives. All right, so without further ado, let's talk about the mechanics of this thing. As I mentioned, 10 prize packages, uh, but there's only one raffle. You know, folks ask every year, can I put all my tickets in for the truck voucher? Or can I put all my tickets in for the boat? It's not how it works in Tennessee, one raffle only. So when you buy tickets, no, oh, pardon me. When you buy tickets, uh, you're put in for all of these packages. Um, and on the 16th, we drew 110 tickets randomly. Um, and we will start contacting the winners as soon as this presentation is over. Our people are going to be on the phone and emailing these winners. And then over the next few days, um, the winners will select from the available packages in the order that they were drawn. So the first name out of the hat, they're going to get their choice of all 10 packages, so on and so forth, until all of the packages have been selected. Sometimes that process can take a couple of days. I think last year by Saturday, all of the prizes had been selected. Um, and I think the, the winner last year was at a dealership by Saturday ordering a truck. So... <laughs> Um, so if you're out there today watching from home, um, if the phone rings here after this presentation, even if you don't recognize the number today, would probably be a good day to pick that phone up uh, and actually answer that. There's a little bit of paperwork that needs to be done, but the winners will be able to pick up their packages, prizes on September 17th. All right. So that's a little bit about the mechanics. And uh, let's go ahead and get into the actual winners. And first out of the hat this year is John Brink from Decatur, Alabama. The number two winner is Greg Stevenson from Cookville, Tennessee. In the number three slot is Jeffrey Soule from Frankfort, Kentucky. Coming in number four is Timothy Hicks from Shelbyville, Tennessee. Our fifth winner is David Schwartz from Liberty, Tennessee. Number six is Leon Masson from Nashville, Tennessee. Number seven, David Campbell from Old Hickory, Tennessee. Number eight is Travis McNabb from Burns, Tennessee. Our ninth winner is Stephen Moody from Franklin, Tennessee. And our tenth and final winner is John Baker from Kingsport, Tennessee. So congratulations to all these folks. I know they're going to be excited. Your phones are probably ringing already, so be sure to add that. And uh, that concludes all off this year. We couldn't have done it without their without their support. Thank you so much, Director Maxidon. You have an announcement, Madam Chair. I just want to thank Joey and his team for all the hard work. Joey was very humble in talking about how much work goes into this raffle. So, Joey, on behalf of the Agency Commission, thank you and your team for all the hard work that you put in. Congratulations to all the winners. Let's give Joey another round of applause. Before we move on to voting, we got so excited we did not vote on the minutes. So we're going to go back. We had a motion and a second. All in favor of passing, passing minutes? Vote aye. by saying aye. aye. All opposed? Minutes passed. Okay. This time, I'd like to call on Chairman Tommy Woods with voting. 
Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, this being a rulemaking hearing, I'll turn the procedures back over to Madam Box. Thank you, sir. This is a rulemaking hearing before the Tennessee Fish and Wildlife Commission to consider amending the following rules. Chapter 1660-02-07-07, Center Hill Lake, and Chapter 1660-02-07-14, Fort Loudon Lake, which deal with rules and regulations governing operation of vessels. My name, my name is Angie Box, and I will conduct the hearing. Order of Proceedings. Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency staff will present information on the proposed rule. Commission members will be per permitted to comment and ask questions. Members of the audience will be permitted to comment and ask questions. Staff members and members of the audience wishing to speak should identify themselves before speaking. I reserve the right to limit comments and discussion, especially in cases of repetition. I'd like to call on Lieutenant Colonel, Colonel uh, Glenn Motes, please. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. So first I'd like to give a proposal on the Center Hill Lake um, rule amendment. I'm not sure which button to push here. Okay. Um, so this amendment resulted from some meetings that our regional personnel had all last year with uh, stakeholders in the area of Sligo Marina to include uh, the Army Corps of Engineers and Sligo Marina personnel and our personnel. Uh, this has to do with primarily the Sligo Marina continues to expand. And that also brings in increased boat traffic in the area to and from the marina and around the marina. So we would propose to expand the zone, uh, no wake zone uh, near the marina uh, for boating safety in this area. Um, one of the proposals that we'd like to present is that this zone would be effective essentially from Memorial Day to Labor Day. Uh, you can see in the rule it's May 15th to September 15th. This would allow the marina to put the buoys out and retrieve the buoys uh, in September. So they, they would be responsible for doing that. And you can see the red lines that we've located uh, where we'd like to expand the zone across to the far shoreline <clears throat> during that time period. Do we have any questions? Um, yeah, I do, Madam okay. Chairman. Glenn, it doesn't look like to me that the that the is 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 this the as far out as the marina is going to go, or is it be added on? Uh, the way I understand it is there's a fuel dock that's going to be pushed to the outer part of that. The fuel dock is that. A little section in between two main areas there. I believe the plan or to put fuel on the outer part for some reason. So that would push it out some. Yes. All right. Uh, uh, Commissioner Cox, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We need a motion and a second for oh, discussion. Sorry. So so moved as presented. Presented. Second. Second. Okay. Motion carried as discussion. Go ahead, Commissioner Cox. Thank you. Glenn, it doesn't look like to me that the that the, the the space between the dock and the far shore is as narrow as the I guess that's north as the shore to shore on the past the marina. So what is uh, the justification of the no wake when it's when it's wider there than it is just north of there? I believe that's where, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask regional coordinator Matt Clary to come up because I don't want to misspeak. He, he's been involved in the discussions last year with the local folks, and maybe he can help answer that for you. Yeah, uh, yeah so um, so I'm actually proposed to do no wake zone from bank to bank on both sides. So on the west, northwest side and the east side. This was a compromise to do that. They're still getting their 300 feet on that north side. And on the east side, we opened that up a little bit bigger, mainly because of the 
the gas stock to protect that gas stock. But then also when you've got this, this marina in particular has got a lot of big boats. I'm talking big cruisers. Uh, wakeboard boats like to come through here and, and ski around this dock constantly. And when you are standing on that east dock that goes all the way out there, it almost whips you off the dock and throws you in the water when those rollers are coming in. So that's the main one of the main reasons why we wanted to extend that is because of safety for the the patrons of that of that dock. Um, and the the new 200 foot 400 foot wakeboard rule does not affect this at all. This is almost a thousand feet from dock to shore. Um, so that they could ski all day long if they wanted to in that same areas. There were two, two contentions was the gas stock would be protected. And then also the, uh, the safety of the patrons there at the, at the Marina. All right. So I don't see a wave break barrier around that Marina. Is that not, I guess it isn't required before they get a no way. No, sir. I and mean, that is an option. We, we do, we do talk about that. Obviously a wave break, they don't make money on wave breaks and they're close to one and a half to $2 million to put a wave break that size to be able to protect that dock. Um, so this is a, obviously a cheaper way for them to protect themselves. And, uh, and then also the other, the other, uh, compromise was the C, um, C part of this and from what we've heard from the locals the bass fishermen mainly because those are the ones we worried about the most uh, they're they're in favor they're fine with it just because obviously they can they can run through there in the winter time and not have an issue the Corps of engineers approves this this move and and we've talked about this before now you were glenn one might might explain the process when the Corps approves an expansion of a marina that puts the that puts the responsibility on twra to provide the safety so we're how does that process work when they allow a marina to continue to expand like that and then we have to cut off uh the area for for pass through how does that exactly can you expound on that a little bit or explain that one of y'all i mean they they contact us when those things happen there's going to be a, a a really big change uh this one wasn't a huge change as far as going out just some moving around i think the northwest dock is kind of being pushed out some um but uh but normally they do contact us and tell us that something's going on they're planning on some expansion when you say it's negotiated who'd you negotiate with uh, there's no negotiations per se. I mean, well, the you core. Said you said this was a compromise. Who's oh, you you're talking about with? us, us and the core and the marina owners. All, all of us sit down and have a meeting about it, and talk about it. And uh, that's the. I, I thought you were talking about the expansions, but the no wake zone. Yes, everybody's involved. That's that's there. All right. The next question is why wouldn't you go, I guess, south of the bridge and include that. Seems like the bridge is more dangerous than it, to me than the. That's a pretty pretty large bridge. If you've not seen that bridge, it's it's huge. So you don't think uh, it's need that. And okay. they've rebuilt that one in the past ten right. years. No problem. <clears throat> Thank you, Matt. Good. Making sure you completed. The, yeah, go ahead, Commissioner. This might be a legal question. Uh, do we need to define motorboats? I know in this area. Um, obviously you have wave runners and I know there's three or four owners of seaplanes and they taxi into the marina to get fuel or stop and eat. Do you need to define motorboats relative to this rule? You mean as opposed to a, a seaplane? Well, you, you just say motorboats. Does that include a, a wave runner? Does that include a seaplane? Yes. That, well, I don't, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't believe we regulate seaplanes, but it would include any motorized vessel at all. So then that, that's how you would define motorboats. So yes. Then it would, once the seaplane's on the water taxiing, he needs to taxi at an idle speed and not on the step. A wave runner needs to idle into the marina. Yes. And not up on plane, et yes. cetera, et cetera. Yes. So it, it is defined. Okay, thank you. I just was curious. Do we have any discussion from the commission 
and the public. Make sure that I address anyone from the public that has comments. Okay. Seeing none, we have a motion and a second of approval of 1660-02-07, regulations and governing operation of vehicles, of vessels. 1660-02-07, uh, Fort Loudon Reservoir. Do I have a, have a vote all in favor? A passage of 1660-02-07. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed? No. Okay, motion carried. Roll call. Okay, we're going to do a roll call vote. This right, the first one only. Right, we're doing a roll call vote for the first Fort Loudon. Is that correct? Of uh, Center Hill Lake. Center Hill Lake. Hill? Okay. Okay. I think we we swapped the order on presentation. I believe what happened. Okay, so Center Hill is first. Okay. So we do roll call vote on Center Hill Reservoir Rule for 1660-02-07 and 1660-02-07-07. that correct? Yes. Okay. Yes, that's correct. All right. Yeah, go ahead. Jimmy Granberry? Yes. Tommy Woods? Yes. Monty Ballou? Stan Butts, yes. Molly Childress, yes. Bill Cox, no. Chris Devaney, yes. Chris Saltzman, Steve Jones, yes. Brian McLaren, yes. Kent Woods, yes. Hank Wright, yes. Angie Box, yes. Okay. Rule passes. Thank you, Jeanette. The second rulemaking hearing will vote 1660-02-07 and 1660-02-07-14. All in favor of passage, say, vote uh, by saying aye. Uh, we need to present that. I'm so sorry. That's okay. okay. Go right ahead, sir. Okay. Thank you. So this next one um, <clears throat> for your consideration is on uh, the Little River section of Fort Loudon Lake. Um, it concerns uh, two bridges that cross that waterway, the Highway 129 and, a, and also a railroad bridge. And we would like to um, present that we would just under this bridge, I'll, I'll have a, I got a slide right here. Here's a, here's a picture of this. Where the red lines are is where we would pr propose to have a no wake zone. And this would be for public safety in and around this bridge. Over the last couple of years, we've had um, some accidents there. In 2019, we had a serious injury accident where someone struck the bridge piling. And in 2021, we had an incident that resulted in two fatalities from a, a boat striking this bridge. So we feel like in to public safety, we should put uh, the boating public on notice that this is a hazardous area and they should slow down in this area. Any questions? You do have a motion and a second of approval. Second, Commissioner Granberry. Discussion from the commission. Real quick, uh, Lieutenant Colonel, are there any lights on this bridge? Uh, that I don't know. Um, uh, I mean, there's I actually two bridges if I'm looking at the you're saying photograph. No, uh, Reed, uh, Major Hammonds is saying no lights. No lights. Huh. Is that something that we should consider also? It looks because it's there's two bridges, so they clear that first bridge and then the other pylons aren't in line. Just seems like that might be part of the problem especially at night. Yeah, we would probably need to consult with the railroad and uh, and TDOT on that. I believe that would be their responsibility to place those lights. 
Okay. But Makes that sense. might be yeah. something we can consider. Well, maybe it's just reflectors, just, you know, right. because most people at night are using a Q beam. Okay. Any discussion from the public? Yes, ma'am. You come to the front, please. State your name at the microphone. Hi, I'm Jen Robinson from Knoxville. Um, as for the accidents and lights, the accidents in question, none of them happened at night. They all happened during the day. Um, so I don't know if that will really help the situation. Um, I live on one of those houses there, and the boat traffic is crazy. I've been personally accosted verbally for paddleboarding in that area uh, and told to get out of the channel. Um, I live in the channel. <laughs> so in order to get my paddleboard anywhere, I'm in the channel. Uh, rowers, the row, the row teams come up and down there. If you're in a speedboat, you can't see that far in front of you going 50 miles an hour down that river. It's a major safety hazard. I've only been there a short time, and in that short time, in the last 14 months, we've had three deaths on that river. Please don't make another one. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is David Holmes. Um, I, I, on that photo uh, on the proposed boundary, um, where that line of 20 boat docks are, from those boat docks to the shoreline is 200 feet. That's all it is. The, the, the speed of the boats that go through there um, is extremely fast. Um, I've sent video of, of boats um, from even from the from the day where the two people died on June fifth of last year, you had thirty rescue personnel, medical examiners, Knox County Fire, TWRA, lights on, the whole nine yards in the water, and you still had people racing to try to get under that bridge with little regard for what's going on there. The uh, if there is going to be a no wake zone. It should be only 290 feet. The 120 uh, bridge is, is about 300 feet wide. There are 15 concrete pillars that offset underneath that bridge. And you can see it's a blind corner uh, going downstream um, to the west of that. Um, and it needs to be expanded upstream um, or we're going to have another uh, accident or, or fatality uh, as a result um, of this bridge. It's too narrow for the amount of traffic and the amount of boats coming through. So I will be for uh, expanded uh, no wake zone. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Mary Miller. I live at 3918 Shipwatch Lane on this river as well. Um, the I am confused because um, we were told that the the length of the no wake zone would not be determined today, and so we would like to know whether it is going to be that limited because there is a substantial portion of our community that would like the no wake zone to be further down the river because there has been an increase, a substantial increase. As you know, my husband's in the boating industry and he's going to speak. There's been a substantial increase in the number of boats. That's not a good reflection. That dock now is almost totally full with boats that are docked there. Um, there are additional docks that have been built, individual docks. Um, in addition, we have a crew team that practices on that area. We have um, a, a substantial increase in paddle border kayakers. Uh, this, for those of you who are not familiar, on this side, uh, on the Blount County side, is the uh, subdivision where Pat Summit used to live. It's just been a substantial increase, not only of people living there, but of boat traffic uh, and um, 
the different types of boat traffic. So we would support an awake zone, but we would like to know, um, we would like it to come further down the river, for our, I would say, uh, I guess that would be further east. Um, uh, we don't think this is gonna be enough to resolve the problem if it's just this limited area. Um, I will say that some of us were not even aware uh, of this meeting until last night. Um, and so that would, that would be our one question. The second question would be, when would it be implemented? Um, uh, it, would it be um, as soon as possible? Because as they said, we had another drowning last week just on the other side. Um, and so this, it's become very dangerous. Um, and we would support a no-wake zone. Thank you. Good morning. morning. Uh, I'm Ron Miller, uh, and that was my wife. Uh, again, uh, we live in the uh, community there on the water. Um, I am the uh, uh, CEO of Bowmate Trailers in Merrillville, and we're, we work with the different uh, uh, industry advocates on uh, water safety and uh, 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 being uh, responsible boaters. With that being said, this area has grown tremendously over the last few years. Uh, all of the slips are full now. Uh, this photo here is, is, is dated. Uh, with that being said, also new uh, 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 docks have been put in. And also over the last uh, few years, uh, the boating industry in this area has grown tremendously. Our business is up 75% last year, 45% this year. With that being said, that's across the water there, you're only talking about 200 foot. And the, the new rule that just went in to effect as far as uh, tow boats are concerned, staying 200 foot from the shoreline uh, when, you're, when you've got ballast on and you're, you're pulling somebody, we've had people come up through there that, you know, that, are, that it's not responsible boating. We support responsible. We don't want to restrict everything, but we do want responsible boating. But this area right here there uh, with, with a tow boat or in the back, if they get close, they're just, it's a mess, but you've got a, a documentum there that is boats coming in and out. And then you've got the structure there with a the bridge where people are trying to get through there without hitting the pillars of the bridge. But also when they get on the other side, if they're coming through there at a high rate of speed, it's, it's difficult not to, uh, I mean, to avoid the congestion of that area. So uh, I'm in favor of moving it further up a little bit than what it is right there. Uh, especially where the docks are so that you can, you'll have more room there so that people can boat safely. Thank you. Thank you so much. Morning. I'm uh, John Carroll. Um, uh, looking at the aerial here, uh, I'm the far right uh, end cap slip. I got uh, three young children under nine years old that swim out in that area. And as others uh, pointed out, it is only 200 feet from the edge of our dock to the other slip. I mean, the other uh, shoreline there. And there's another buoy, uh, which I would call the black line that's in between my uh, slip and about around that first house with the brown roof. Uh, I'd uh, maybe like it pushed back to at minimum the uh, the black line there. There's not enough room right here in just this, this little hundred foot span to the right of the bridge for anybody to slow down and have any kind of reaction time. So I, I pushed out to the black line um, and just appreciate all y'all's help. Thank you. Any other public comment? <clears throat> Any uh, commissioners, any comment from the commissioners? Madam Chairman, I, I debated on whether or not to say anything, but one of the one of the fatalities was uh, uh, the daughter of a good close friend of mine. And so I spent time on that water and that curve is so much when I'm around that curve, I mean, the bridge is right there. So I would, I would encourage, encourage the agency to uh, Expand that no wake zone if they're if at all possible. 
uh, Commissioner, you mean to the east on the other side of that dock? Um, actually, what I'm talking about, and I'll be glad to get input from, from the agency on what to do, but I know that when you come around that corner, that bridge is there. It's just there. And if you're going at a high rate of speed, you're on it. And just, and, and seconds. I mean, you really don't have time to make a decision on where to go. So it's, it's, uh, I, I understand what they're talking about and, and would, uh, would really support, you know, any effort to expand on that, uh, expanding that no wake zone. Okay. Yes, sir. Commissioner. Who determined the no wake zone where it is now? Is that a uh, we did just based on a public safety perspective of near the bridge. That that's why we. But I think the way that we've proposed the wording in the rule, it gives us some wiggle room on where we can place the no wake buoys. Um, so we certainly take direction from the commission on what that should be so tba has no input in this it's up to us to make that decision uh yes it's okay. up to us yes so common sense wise would tell you with the input that's been why would we not move that wet zone all the way around before you enter that curve to account for the speed and reduction and why would we not move it all the way down to where some of those uh, slips are in that area, especially when we're talking about as narrow a channel as we have to accommodate future and possible problems that we know that exist. We could do that. Yes. Well, for my, that's what I, I would see that needs to be done. You know, I'm, I'm open for all kinds of input, but you know, if we're going to put something there, let's do it of substantial space to to deal with the problem, mm -hmm. not just a small narrow area there. I'm just going to frequently we're asked to um, maybe uh, take some measures um, for safety when there hasn't been a history of accidents and uh, there have been a a significant history of accidents here in a short period of time. So I think it makes a lot of sense. And I don't think the current, um, the red lines that are on this graph, I don't think they're sufficient to the west or to the east. And, and just a, an important distinction, this is not the Tennessee River channel itself. This is an offshoot of the channel. And so as far as impeding navigation, I, I, don't, I don't think that's an issue. But I think we should take action on east and west on this personally. And I'd love comments from staff if that's appropriate or if you agree or what are the negatives to that or. Uh, yeah, we debated this uh, where we should put this because we've had input from residents and uh, officers, but we could certainly move that further out on either side. You know, if you look at the way the uh, rule is worded um, and I'll certainly take any comment from legal counsel on this, but we just got it as delineated by the line of buoys near the bridges. I believe that would possibly still be near the bridges. Um, I don't, I don't know how much we need to define that in the rule, but. Madam chairman, uh, he's right. It's, it's worded in such a way that it can pass with direction as written as presented, but the commission can um, express their interest in where they want it to be and, and give Ms. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel, some guidance on how to do that. Yes. So if you want it, if you want expanded more than what he's put up on the screen, then y'all just discuss it and let him know, that, which is exactly what you do. <laughs> that's what that's what I was looking for. So I would. Uh, do you need a motion to? To. Yes. Okay. So I would make a motion. We move that line to uh, forward to that curve and on. Way, the way I, to the left of the pit photograph. That's the eastern side. The eastern side and to the uh, western. Western side. Y'all are giving me mixed mix. So western where that curve side, is, sorry. that line needs to be moved out past that curve. And it, the other line needs to be moved out past that dock. And that's that's my motion. And second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? So on the eastern side, how far past the dock, Commissioner, are you recommend?
the, the discretion of the agency, but I mean, I gave a general geographical location. Uh, it needs to be beyond that curve. Oh, before I'm, you, before I'm, you I'm go good into with the, the eastern side, moving it past over there, but I won't. I mean, oh, past the that dock. Before you get to that, how, how many more slips and, and personal resident docks do we have on the on the eastern side? Where the photo is cut off there. Jen Robinson again on ship watch. Um, before um, this, uh, to our residents, a picture came across that had uh, three lines to the eastern side. One the red at the, at the bridge, like you see. Another black one quite far down and another red one a little further than that. I live at the very end, the last dock that's there on ship watch that you don't actually see that red line actually would have encompassed my dock, which personally I'm in favor of. The, the winter months have been really tough on that area, and we've got a lot of silt that has come and made that area across from my dock actually even more narrow than what this picture shows and, and on the uh, previous picture that we were uh, given. Um, the, there's In the winter, you can see that the silt has really built up and it becomes extremely narrow. So I don't know if we have that picture currently, if we can show it um, where those other two lines were um, that were proposed to the neighborhood earlier this year. Yeah, I don't, I'm not familiar with that picture. I don't have it available. Madam Chairman. Um, yes, sir. I really respect uh, Commissioner Jones's comment me that we're at the tail end of the boating season and I'll, could we go back to the residents and, and get this right before we just look at a photograph and talk about silt lines and stuff between now and next spring do we have to have another rulemaking or can we somehow give the discretion to the agency to put them where they want to after further consultation with the the community and, and you know because we keep talking about end of the boat bridge you know east west Let's get it right before next year's boating season, uh, based on Commissioner Jones's comments, which I wholeheartedly agree because, you know, the safety hazards of I, one of the gentlemen said 15 different abutments uh, trying to navigate through, and you got competing traffic coming both directions. So. Right, I want to have the clarity for exactly the specific yeah. lines. Yes, ma'am. You have a couple of options. You could roll the entire portion of this, this portion of the rule until a future date. Next, well, actually, the next meeting, as long as you make it clear when and where the next meeting, you can roll it by month. The delay test for rules is very long. It can stay in the Attorney General's office any amount of time that they need. So the way it's written, it is broad enough for the agency to pass as written on exactly where to put it. So it is possible that you could pass it today and staff could meet with the public and get the consensus of where it should be and the rule is in place and then the buoys are what will tell of course yes that's exactly what i was trying to say cheryl yeah good <laughs> that's what you said that's what, exactly what i, was trying to say. I have a question uh, comment got, yes sir me, commissioner cox i support this uh, and agree with everything you're saying but i think you need to be cautious about expanding these no wake zones too far because of private docks and I, I understand the thing but if you set a precedent that that the homeowners get to dictate where the no wake buoys are you'll have every river in the state where there are private docks with no wake buoys so you need to be careful about how far this goes and it needs to be based on safety and i don't disagree with the curve and coming past the but if we set this another thousand feet down to the big part of the river, the big part of the lake on the east side, um, you're going to have every subdivision that's on every river in Tennessee come in and want a no wake buoy, and they're going to point to this decision. So we need to be careful about how we expand these and and the imposition you put on boaters that may or may not be necessary. 
this looks like it's much more justified than that other one. I think the Moreno on the other one, I'll have to put in no weight. Um, I mean, uh, weight breaks and all of that before you cut that river off. But, but I think we need to be cautious about how we expand this and you don't set a precedent that's going to, it's going to come back to, to be a problem in the future. Thank you. Commissioner Wright. Yeah, I just agree with uh, Commissioner Cox. We got to balance. I think we need to balance um, safety and, and uh, do that. But I'd much rather take some action today with the agency having leeway of where to place those because we could prevent another accident or death in the meantime while we're waiting. And then we could come back. Uh, the agency could come back next month and, and show us exactly where they're planning or some after pictures and we can make adjustments. Yes, sir. Uh, may I ask, where did this photo originate? The one you're looking at? Yeah, I don't, I don't know, sir. Who, who drew the the two proposed red lines and and the black line I'm on this photo? Sure. I don't, I don't know. Do we? Does that input from the agency? Is that uh, where it Major Hanks may have a comment here. Morning. Um, the photo you're looking at came off of Google Earth. Uh, it's a, just a screenshot off of Google Earth. Originally, after we had some in from the public after the tragic death uh, last year, um, we realized this is this is a, a serious issue that we need to go ahead and try to get moving and addressed. And so since the spring, we've had several people commenting for, for a no-wake zone. Some are against it, but they would be for it in the name of boating safety minimizing the impact to other boaters up and down the channel. The photo that you were shown, I guess from the, okay, you've got it. So that originally, when I sent out information to the public back in the spring, I took this off of Google Earth and just made a red line area. What do you all think about this? And the reason for that red line up so far on that peninsula right there, uh, was just to, as a starting point, so we are aware of any unintended consequences if we limit a well on right here, uh, the starting and stopping of boats, the larger weights that can happen because of that, and all of the residential docks and things there. That was just a starting point. Um, I believe it was David Holmes that, and his in the community right there along the docks, uh, proposed the black line which I've just had a starting point of the red lines. Uh, he proposed the black line, which most of the community was in favor of. Um, there were still some opposing to opposing uh, anything more than minimal, which would be this. And this is uh, what Lieutenant Colonel Motes is showing is just a uh, reference for you all, like what minimal would look like to us. This would be minimal impact around that bridge of an OAG zone. Um, that doesn't mean that's where it's going to be. Of course, we would have community involvement with everyone to make sure that that we're, we we are addressing the pub, the boating safety. Major Hammonds, do you feel confident if if this is passed as written for you all to address the safety concerns? I do. With I do. I feel like we have a good core group of community members that are willing to work with us and, and work together. And I think we can all come to a compromise on where that line needs to be to the east and the west of the bridge. Okay. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. With that channel being so narrow down that section, and it was commented earlier about the, the distance from shore to shore, it, it appears to me from a common sense standpoint that that particular photo circulating would address all the concerns and, and, and that red line to be moved out to where you had it originally for a starting point. I would be in favor of that. Um, because it appears to me that, that I, that whole section of is potentially a, a safety issue, not if you didn't even have slips there, if you didn't even have houses there, it appears that that, that narrow channel from what 
we're being told as far as uh, the types of boats and the types of craft that come down through there, then they understand that that, that is a potential safety issue. And so that's my input. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Butt. Commissioner Wright, you have another question, comment? No, thank you. Thank you. Um, I think based on Commissioner Cox's input and others that we would, the staff would feel comfortable the way the rule's written is to move that line around the curve to the left and potentially move the red line out to the right past that community dock somewhat, if, if that's acceptable with the commission. And then, but we certainly work with the community on that. How far is it? What the length of the zone would be? It does. I, 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 mm -hmm. Mr. Butt want to move, move to the curve. Well, all down through that you can't see in that picture, there are houses and docks all along that river there. So those people are going to come back and they're going to want, they're going to want all their docks protected. So I think we've got to go back to a, to a strictly a safety issue. And if that dock or wherever along in there around to that curve, I haven't seen the river and that bridge, but well, just, I'm just, just telling you, we've got to, we, we, everybody's going to want this if we're right. not careful. Is the commission comfortable with protecting that community dock with all those slips on it? What about the other ones up? It, the, uh, so I made I made I made the original motion, and I know, I know I got a second, but I, I'm comfortable uh, given uh, given the agency leeway. I was using that dock more as a reference, uh, just so that you are slowing your vessel down before you get to the bridge. Uh, the curve itself is, you know, I, but I'm comfortable with you all making uh, working with the community to come up with the proper placement of those signs and. I guess under that, I would, uh, I'll be glad to rescind my motion if everybody's comfortable with that. And Madam Chairman, I move the question as originally presented and ask for a roll call vote, please. Okay. Jimmy Granberry? Yes. Tommy Woods? Yes. Monty Blue, Stan Butts, no. Wally Childress, okay. yeah, can, can we, uh, can, we're, 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 I'm we confused hear real about good what we're right voting down here. Are we, are we voting on putting it right there or moving them down? Yeah, let's clearly state as written, we can pass the rule within and they can navigate through the issues on exactly the border. I'd like to restate that to clarify. If they can, yeah. So we're voting That's to give fine. the agency discretion of where that line goes? I believe we're gonna pass the rule as written today and with direction from the commission to work with the community on the, the best placement of those buoys for safety. And maybe bring it back to the commission to show us. We certainly can, yes. So, so I think we're, today, we're voting. going to bring it back and show us these lines again. We, yes. Because, I mean, I'm, I'm going to say, I'm, I mean, I'm going to protect docks and everything, but I'm like Bill. I mean, we're opening up. We're going to get a lot more of these coming in here for, for private dock protection is what concerns me a little bit. But, I mean, I, I do want to, I want to see it pass, and I want to see it, it be safe right there. But, uh. I'm just uh, concerned that we won't see a lot of this in the future, but I, we definitely need to pass something to protect these people at this bridge. I agree. Yes, sir. Uh, Madam Chairman. Yes, uh, so, so I, I made a motion to extend those red lines because it wasn't really uh, explained that we had discretion, safety discretion. And so I rescinded the motion. I think, Bill, you. You made the second, so I guess you would yeah. receive your second. After the discussion, I'm comfortable with the agency making the determination on where those place where they place those signs and working with the community to make sure they're placed accordingly. 
Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm fine with passing the language that deals directly with safety, doesn't deal with anything else but the safety concern. So it, I'm just making that clarification. So passage as a rule today, on the roof as right written. Now. So that gives Correct, you leeway to move it around that yes. corner or yes. wherever. Yes, to some extent, yes. And with the leeway, yeah, that's fine. You can come up. Ms. Cheryl. I'm sorry, but I'm going to sound like I'm repeating myself. You can pass the rule as written and then give the, give the agency discretion. You can give them discretion you know, carte blanche, you can give them discretion within a, 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 you know, perimeters. You can, you can tell them to come back next month and show, show what they've decided or, you know, any, any time frame. And that's within the rule. It would not come back as like a proclamation. It, it would it, just come back as. It, just it, as inf information. Yeah. Right, just information. And, and right. Further, further yeah, guidance. Yeah, it would just Absolutely. be a report to you sure. and direction from you. And then they, if, right. if they, if action is necessary based on the commission's direction, they could then do that. And if a rule is necessary, we file another notice. Make sure everybody's clear on the commission. Yes, sir. Commissioner Wright. So to clarify, passing the current rule gives the agency the discretion to move those lines east and west. And then I just want to be clear that they're going to come back to us and show us where those have been placed for our uh, uh, adjustment, just as an informational in September? gesture for our adjustment, should it be necessary. Or the timeline for you all to... I'm, I'm not I mean, sure if a month will, will give us time to work with all those folks. Um, yeah, that's fine. Okay. It's whatever the timeline is sufficient. Yes, it may take it may take a month to get a meeting set up with all the community members that want to sure. attend. So, I understand. You have questions, Dan? Commissioner Childress. Can we not pass the thing here for safety? Get it done, and then work in the other. That way, safety's done now, and it don't tie it up for a while. Yes, I'm correct. Yes. I think that's what she stated. We okay. can pass the rule as written today, but also gives them the right and the clarification to address the safety properly and then come back and just right clarify that within the rule. The rules are going to be passed as written today. Is that correct? McLaren, do you have a question? I think I would like to see this eastern border come back about to the front edge of their dock where the, where the walkway comes from the shore out to the dock. I think that would give sufficient protection because the boats traveling um, to the west would have to slow down before they got to the no wake zone and that would get them slowed down to get through the bridge and then move the upper line on the left, move it more around the corner where uh, to get them slowed down in that line curve. Thank you. Any other discussion from the commission? We're in the middle of a vote, right? So we're in the middle of a vote. Let me re-clarify. Well, in that case, as passing as written. No vote to a yes. Okay, let's start. This is passage as 16607. Madam Chair, we're going to start over with the vote. And then we'll right. Back down the line. Because we need to clarify. That's correct. Thank you. Jimmy Granberry. Yes. Tommy Woods. Bonnie Ballou, Stan Butts, yes. Wally Childress, yes. Bill Cox, Aye. Chris Devaney, yes. Chris Saltzman, Steve Jones, yes. Brian McLaren, yes. Kent Woods, yes. Hank Wright, yes. Angie Box. Yes. Motion carried. Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, you took the words right out of my mouth. We're going to take about a 10 minute break. Thank you. Please be back at 1030. Yeah. Chris Olson.
Move forward to budget. I'm going to call on the committee. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, yesterday, the uh, the budget committee recommended, and I move approval of the 23-24 budget. Second. Director, would you like to make any statement or I know we're not going to have another presentation. Does anybody on the commission, you don't have anything? Madam Chairman, you got a motion and a second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Questions? Okay. Motion and second to pass budget 2023-2024 as presented. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? I'd like to I'd like to thank the staff one more time for the hard work. I mean, guys, we we went through this yesterday pretty easily because we had informational work before, and and I, I appreciate the hard work. Good, great, great, great job. Thank you, Chairman Cox, for all your work. Preliminary it made a big difference, so thank you so much. I'd like to call on Director Maxidon for a special announcement. Could, could I mention one thing? Yes, sir. That was a 24. Was there any movement on the 23 expansions, which would be separate? Included. So what, what you voted on or would be voting on was expansions for 23 and the overall approvement budget of the budget 24. with those. Okay. Yeah. But it was, it was 24. Vote. That's correct. All right, Madam Chairman. Thank you. We have someone very special with us today for what is probably his last commission meeting. Um, today, we're recognizing retiring director Bobby Wilson. Um, Bobby joined TWRA in 1979, has been with the agency for 43 years. He's had a lot of great success in that time, including serving as chief of the fisheries division, deputy director, and then, of course, executive director. Bobby has been at the lead for many great ideas, including the push to stock pass in Chickamauga in 2000 to help the lake recover from a bass crash. Fifteen years later, he got signed the final certificate to see state record largemouth bass caught there. It's just one of the examples of how Bobby has helped lead the agency to take action that was critical not only for the fisheries populations, but also for the public and angler satisfaction. We also had to bring out this old picture. I'm going to wait for that one to roll up here because you can see that Bobby's introducing some folks to catfish noodling. <laughs> this was for girls gone grabbling. Bobby loves to go catfish <laughs> grabbling every year and has a big time with that. Um, I think this one shows how much fun that Bobby likes to have. He's a he's a great man. He's a great leader for the agency. And I'm personally grateful for Bobby's friendship over the years and his willingness to stay on and help with the budget this year. So, Director, I promise you won't have to do any more budgets. Thank you for coming back on and helping us through that. At this time, I'd like to ask the Director to come up. And I'd also like to ask Miss Molly to come up. Here at TWA, we are a family. And Miss Molly is looking at me like, oh, no, but I want you to come up, Miss Molly. Uh, Molly is, <laughs> is always with Bobby. She's a part of the TWRA family. Molly is at every event. And if you are part of the TWRA family, you know uh, it's it's a it's a family effort. And you're always there to, to be beside his side, Miss Molly. Thank you for that. So congratulations, Director, on your retirement. Thank you, Thank you for your service to the state and what you've done for conservation. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Thank you, Director Maxidon, and uh, thank you, Commissioners. And I've got a few words. I was going to say I've got about 50 slides I'm going to show, but Jason's already showed them, so <laughs> I won't do that. But, you know, when I look back at uh, – back in, back even when I was in high school, trying to determine, like every high school student, what they want to do with their lives going forward, whether it's go to college or not go to college or join the military or something, I remember thinking, gosh, I wish I could figure out something to do where I – I looked forward to Sundays because I got to go. I got to go to work on Mondays, or I didn't really Sundays because I got to go. I got to go to work on Mondays, or I didn't really kind of look forward so much to Fridays because it just meant a weekend. But uh, I couldn't come up with anything. I, I was working at a, a pharmacy, so I thought maybe I'll be a pharmacist. So I, 
went to uh, college Memphis State my freshman year and was majoring in pre-med and uh, you know I thought that'd be a great career uh, then I, I happened to go up to Tennessee Tech University my freshman year to visit my cousin I was looking at his course catalog and saw in their wildlife management program and I thought crap you can get a degree in this so that's I said, that's what I want to do so I, I transferred to tech got a degree a BS degree in wildlife management uh, and then graduated and, and couldn't find a job for about a year and a half. And so I decided to go back to graduate school, get a master's degree in fisheries management. And um, I remember while I was there, there was a guy named Mike Thompson. Many in Region 3 may remember Mike. He was a, a longtime employee of the agency, but he was a he had a part-time fisheries technician position with TWA. And I talked to Mike about it, and uh, I got all excited. I said, that's what I want to do. I want to go to work for TWA one of these days. So... Um, I got to take Mike's job uh, when he got on full time with TWA and I was a part time fisheries technician. And then, of course, uh, the job for uh, Lake Graham in Jackson came open and I put in for that and I was lucky enough to get that. I remember when our HR chief, his name was Jim Dillard, called me and he said, uh, he said, James, we would like for you to go to work for us. And I said, I'll take it. And that was outside of being uh, getting married to Molly and outside of my kids being born. It was probably the most exciting day of my life. And. And uh, I didn't, who would know that I would work for the TWA for 40 years or I've been able to do. So I've been, I've been blessed uh, to have worked for this agency for so long. I've been blessed to work with so many incredibly uh, talented and dedicated in TWA. I've been blessed to work for the, the sportsmen and women of our state and their visitors. And uh, I just want to thank the commission for allowing me to do that when, by the way, when, um, when I put in for the director position a couple of years ago, I, I never was, I never intended to be a long-term director. I think we all knew that I'm, I got 42 years. I'm, I'm 68 years old. I, I just didn't want to work. So I, you know, I, I didn't have any free time eventually. So my, my mission was to try to, to tr uh, transgress or to make that transition from Ed Carter's management to, basically the same kind of management. And also the main thing was to try to get somebody in to get some experience, some training that they could take over and be your longer term director, which I uh, say mission accomplished. Uh, Jason and, and his team, I'm excited for them. I'm excited for the agency. I'm excited for this commission. I'm excited for the, like I said, the sports men and women of the state to go forward and, 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 and I'm excited for them because that's, they're all new. It's a brand new group of folks and they're, all talented or smart, uh, that they're in this agency is in great hands going forward. So, with that, I'll just say thank you, commissioners, thank you, everybody else, and thank you, uh, staff. Um, and thank you, Molly, for putting up with all this all these years. But, uh, anyway, uh, and I I won't be a total stranger. I, this will be my last commission meeting as a TWA employee, but who knows? I may surprise you. That's why I love. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you so much, George Wilson. I'd like to call on Frank Fiss with Fisher Fiss <laughs> with Fisheries. This is my Fisk. this this will hopefully Fisk. my last. Uh, That's right. My my last role as Fisheries Chief. So okay. thank you. Yeah, we've got it. We got some minor work to do on the free fishing the proclamation. For those of you that don't know, we have a the we have the authority or the commission is authorized by law to set one day aside for free fishing each year. And it's been tradition that it's the first Saturday after the first Monday in June every year. And at this time, you don't need a fishing license. You don't need any permits. You can just go fishing. And the intent is to get everyone out that might want to try it to do it. So in, it's also a time when the agency celebrates fishing. We have several free fishing days around the state, 80 annually typically up to 17,000 kids. We stock in the neighborhood of 30,000 of catfish at different locations to make these events better. And we get a lot of buy-in from local organizations, as you can see on this flyer here. We, everybody helps out to sponsor these events. They're very, they're very popular, 
hundreds of people come to these events at times. Uh, here's one at Mark Ferry. It's a, always a good community draw. A lot of a uh, lot of people help out to make this happen. Some of them are a lot quieter, so it's just a nice time. That we even get some some celebrities out, but Bill Dance is known nationally. But we have other people in the communities that are well known that come out and support these events. In the communities that are well known that come out and support these events. And when we talk about when I talk about free fishing, it's one person that comes to mind, and that's Bobby Wilson. Bobby always championed free fishing day events, made sure we had to catfish, encouraged all the staff to get involved and go, encouraged me to go to events. I didn't go to as many as I probably should have. He always managed to get uh, working in. He worked it into his vacations when he was going out of town. Molly knows about that. Uh, he always made sure uh, he always made sure he goes to these events to to support everyone. So for that reason, I'm proposing and the commission the commission's request to Proclamation 2209 to designate Free Fishing Day Bobby Wilson Free Fishing Day. That's our request for the agency and for the commission. getting choked up thank you frank fish uh do we have a motion i'd like to make a motion that we yes. accept the proclamation as presented uh for the bobby wilson free fishing day and a little note that don't tell bobby don't bobby don't tell anybody where you are when that picture was taken <laughs> so they'll be down there <laughs> i'll second the motion me too Everybody. Everybody. unanimously seconds perfect Thank you. In favor of voting, dignify by saying aye. Ah, ah. All opposed. Congratulations, Bobby Wilson Free Fishing Day. All opposed. Congratulations, Bobby Wilson Free Fishing Day. Thank you. Thank you, commissioners, and thank you, Bobby. Any comments? What, you want your plaque? <laughs> Bill Cox has a comment. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Forgot about this. I've been chasing this around Nashville for a month. And I forgot about. It. <laughs> let's go on. Let's get a. Uh... I'll go ahead and start, Madam Chairman. Uh, I think it's 2002. Bobby was assistant chief of fisheries, and he invited me to go to the Wolf to the Mississippi River shocking uh, on research on a shock boat and it was on that trip that we shocked up several fish but the we shocked up some kind of a minnow it hadn't have been an inch and a half long and they took that bobby wilson took that little fish something you'd have to have a magnifying glass to look at it he put it on this table and he measured it and estimated the weight and wrote down a description and filled out a whole page of information on this bait that we caught. And I knew at that minute that these guys were serious about their job. And it's been a long time and I won't take a lot of time, but we, my memories of Bobby are, um, we had a lot of time with the, with the commercial fishermen and he helped navigate that with, Bill Reeves was the chief, and then he was the chief. And, you know, Bobby's personality was always disarming. He always had a smile on his face, kind of like he knew something you didn't know, and it kind of tickled him. And he, he, he's always grinning at you. And he's um, – uh, when I was raising Cain about this or that, and he, he – uh, when I first got on the commission, I thought if we move the limit at Dale Hollow to a longer limit, we'll grow bigger fish. And I – can't believe why that's not no brainer. Had a big me up staff. Everybody was mad. Uh, uh, George Aiken was the chairman. He said, "What are you doing?" So you know, everybody was upset. Well, uh, Anders Murray was the guy out there, and he's retiring. And I don't want to do this fight and all that. Well, I, you know, I still nobody explained to him. But Bobby took me aside after we had that little meeting. He said, "Here's why we can't do that." And he explained it to me. It's an old lake. It probably won't happen again. So he. He's, he's, he's always got a 
a good attitude and a disarming personality and, and always in a good mood, it seems like. And, and I, you know, you put Jason in here and that's the last thing you did. And it was, may have been the best thing you did. So uh, I appreciate your friendship and your, in your work. Thank you. Any other comments? Yeah, I'll make a, yes. a short comment. Probably in retro, Bobby and I graduated from Texas very close to the same time. Probably knew and worked with a fisheries biologist by the name of Jim Little. You probably knew and remember him. And uh, so my degree was in wildlife management probably two or three years before Bobby graduated. And so that's just kind of an interesting little side note from uh, from our past experience. And we didn't know one another at the time. And But now uh, it's always rewarding to know that that qualified people have that same desire and and uh, follow through on that so i appreciate bobby for for him sticking with it for 42 years of commitment to to his dream as well as to the agency just a comment uh yesterday we talked about new grandchildren and bobby and molly i know y'all have your first grandchild and i know that this will give you the amount of time that that grandbaby deserves and uh we just can't wish you anything but the best moving forward um, in your next chapter of grandchildren and free time and we just thank you so much for your years of dedication and service to this agency and this, these all these commissioners you've had to put up with and uh you're loved and respected by everybody and we just appreciate all you've done and we went back and forth about a dock, or we didn't name a dock after him, or a lake. And uh, free fishing day, Bobby Wilson. Free fishing day was very fitting, so we're proud to do that. And also, thank you for letting me appreciate and fall in love with fish, catfish, crab boy. <laughs> I said, well, "I'll try that. Let me. That'd be good." But anyway, thank you for everything. We appreciate it. you've done us. We're excited for your next chapter. All right, that was fun. No, not today. Okay, any more comments before we move forward? Okay, well, if there's no other further business or comments from the public or commission, All right, we'll move forward. Next month, we are meeting at uh, Fall Creek Falls State Park, September 15th and 16th. And is there a motion to adjourn? Move. All right, second. Okay, we are adjourned. Good job. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, let's get a picture with Bobby. Hey, Bobby.